Well, it's E3. Well, a week from E3. And I just thought I'd do a couple of videos kind of in relation to E3. This first one, I want to do a discussion, as you probably guessed from the title, of the next generation consoles. So, I mean, what what to honestly say? Um, I don't mean to sound like a, P a Sony fanboy in this um, whole video because I'm I'm not. I prefer PlayStation over Xbox, but not to an extreme degree. So I'm gonna try to be not too biased, but I'm sure a lot of you, even Microsoft fans, probably feel the same way about what I'm going to talk about in some respects. Um, the PS4 reveal, which occurred in I think February. I watched it. It was um it was a pretty good reveal actually. It revealed um some games. Uh, I saw Infamous, Infamous. I saw a new Killzone. The biggest problem I had with that reveal though was that it didn't show the console, which as you know, I mean, wasn't that big of a deal because they're going to be revealing it at E3. So that wasn't a big problem, but I did like the selection of games that they showed. I mean, I'm not the biggest Killzone fan. It's kind of generic for my taste. But the new Infamous game looks interesting enough from the trailer. Um, I kind of liked the whole graphical input thing, the where they showed the graphical capabilities with, uh, with Quantic Dreams showing of whatever the hell that old man was. Like it showed the graphical capabilities, and that's interesting. And uh, the features on the PS4 seem pretty good. And uh, there are no evidences to suggest that used games will not be a part of the whole picture and there's no evidence stating that there will be a fee yet I mean I really hope they don't add a subscription um, if if they don't add a subscription I could really hope in the console wars overall because that's one of Sony's main selling points right there overall the review was reveal was good I mean it didn't reveal the hardware but it did reveal some of the capabilities and I mean it did reveal the controller which is interesting looking I mean nothing to really complain about but overall the reveal was decent and it was worth the hype in my opinion um there, there was I mean some stuff wrong with it I mean I would have preferred to see some hardware I would have also like the actual system I would also prefer to see some more games cuz I mean a lot of the ones I wasn't even interested in like drive club like who cares I mean, at least it's an in, a new IP or whatever you want to call it. At least it's new. It's a new franchise. Um, they have some other ideas. It's a good sign. Nobody cares about the PlayStation Move, and they showed that off, which kind of was intriguing, to say the least. But again, overall decent reveal. But um, moving on to the whole Xbox One thing. In my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions too. Um, and I say this with no bias, it's just, the Xbox One reveal was just terrible. I'm sorry, just terrible. Um, I was interested to see it because I actually wanted to buy both consoles this generation if I got the money, if I had the money, and to play them out for myself. But, the reveal was rather disappointing. Um, it did show off the console and the capabilities, but it, my problem with it is that it seems to be catering towards the casual gamer almost like somebody who just uses it to watch TV or use the apps or whatever the hell that and they're kind of marketing the connect even more and that's a mistake in my opinion I mean they say they're coming out with 15 new exclusives or I think that's the number don't quote me if I'm false but you know I just I, most of those exclusives I bet you anything are going to be connect games like connect games like seriously I don't and even if they're not I don't see them being original franchises or anything I mean it said that they were gonna there were gonna be new franchises but I don't believe them or I don't believe that these franchises will be big um rare I heard rare did make an announcement so that will be good for software but going back to the announce reveal they didn't show off any games at all I don't believe no they didn't they didn't show off any games other than that new Forza that's coming out, and that's a car game, so really, who cares about that? But, I'm sorry to anybody who likes car games, but, I mean, they're not they're not exactly groundbreaking. But, um, we saw a Halo TV show that apparently Steven Spielberg has something to do with, and I don't get the point of that at all. Like, 
couldn't that have been revealed somewhere else? Like, does that really need to be put in with the Xbox One reveal? I don't know. Anyways, um, overall, it didn't impress me. Just all the features, it's just like, is this really where gaming's heading? That, and they were talking about using a fee for used games, but it sounds like they're unsure about that now. But if they were to add this used game fee thing, Microsoft could be in some big trouble, especially if Sony does not have a subscription fee for their PlayStation Network service. Um, but overall, what I predict for both of these consoles is that I predict the PlayStation 4 to sell well. I also actually do predict Xbox One to sell well because a lot of those Xbox fans seem like they're um, dedicated. They're a dedicated fan base. Um, I mean, you know, Halo 5, which is un inevitably going to come out soon, will obviously sell a lot of money. Or, will obviously sell a lot of units and make a lot of money, is what I meant. But, it'll, it'll be big. Anything, I mean, despite my critique on their IPs, or whatever you want to call them, <clears throat> being unoriginal, I mean, they sell well, right? So, if they come out with a Gears of War five or whatever number they're on i think they're on five now and if they come out with a halo five a fable four you know those franchises they're going to sell a lot of money they have a lot of dedicated franchises under their wing but they do have to watch out for sony and um some of their franchises i, I don't really see infamous or Killzone outselling halo gears of war any of those games but if they were to come out with something like The Last of Us, I predict to sell extremely well, at least among that fan base. I also predict Beyond Two Souls, the new Quantic Dream title, to garner a lot of support as well because of the large following from the Heavy Rain game. So, I mean, overall, I think both consoles will sell well because of both the dedicated fan bases, and I don't think one really has the advantage over the other because a lot of Xbox fans are coming over to PlayStation 4 for this, but, and yet, like I said, both sides have dedicated fan bases. Um,. A lot of people are disappointed with the Xbox One reveal, but, you know, maybe they will be able to redeem themselves at E3. There's a rumored uh, Killer Instinct rehash, there's a rumored um, Banjo-Kazooie game, which, I mean, that's big, because Nuts and Bolts wasn't exactly a great title, and we've been waiting for a Banjo-Kazooie game since 2000's Banjo-Tooie on the Nintendo 64. So if Rare could come through for Microsoft for once, because Microsoft has pretty much done absolutely nothing with rare's original titles here they've come out with what was it they came out with conquers reloaded back in 03 i believe and they came out with um some random titles here and there and then they came out with nuts and bolts which butchered the banjo kazooie series and turned it into a kart racer which was god awful but you know maybe microsoft can turn rare around to help them in the long run because i know for a fact that if Microsoft was get to, to get Rare to make some great games, like in the Banjo Kazooie series or Conquer, like even a new Conquer or um, a Killer Instinct rehash that's rumored, I think that'd help a lot. You know, if they have, rely on the games, you know, what we could see at E3 is um, something to re something to redeem Microsoft for the Xbox One reveal, which did not satisfy many. But, if they were to rely mainly on the games and show them the fans that they still care about the games, then you could market to basically any gamer out there, and that would be a very smart decision. So, I mean, what we're going to see at E3 is something good, something revolutionary, I'm sure. So, hold on to your seats, and uh, how about we watch E3? I think GameStop Spot is uh, marketing or showing it, and um, should be a great show. Both consoles look impressive, well, the Xbox One not so much to me, but to many, the Xbox One does look like it's going to be revolutionary for a lot of people, really, despite the subscription fees and all that. The PlayStation 4 looks to be promising, hopefully we get to see some hardware and some more games. And um, anyways, I, uh, I noticed like some bad quality with some of my other videos, like the top 10 most anticipated games of 2013, I did not like. The quality and the lack of professionalism I used in that video, so I will be re I will be deleting that video because <laughs> I'm I don't like it, and uh, I'm going to be redoing that video in the format of the top ten most anticipated game, my most anticipated games for E3 to reveal. 
Thank you for watching, and I hope you tune in for that, which I will post later. Thank you very much.